don't really know. I'm turning 64 in March. I'm just about to retire, but I don't think I can retire from preaching. <laughs> and as long as there are houses, I will be there because it's my new ministry. Amen. Uh, as long as God keeps opening houses, I will be there to, to minister the gospel. So I really believe God will keep this alive. Amen. And God keeps opening doors. So thank you, Jomar. As long as God and Nancy, as long as God is opening doors, we will be there. Amen. Praise God. So God is good. We live, we should learn how to live one day at a time. Amen. Praise God. So chances are next year they say the interest rates will be 2.5. So chances are we can renew. Amen? So it's really up to God. And my wife is getting well with sciatica. She's able to walk, sit eight hours now, but she had to walk every hour. Take a 10-minute break. Right? Uh, her boss is okay. No problem. Amen? Because he's only paying minimum anyway, so he can't complain, you know? For an accounting job, you can't really complain, you know, right? As long as the job gets done at the end of the day, amen. Amen? amen. All the checks. So she seems to be okay for another year or two, as long as that sciatica doesn't get worse. Amen. Of course, I have it too, but I'm just ignoring it. <laughs> so, guys, good today. Uh, we're gonna talk about what heaven is like. So I'm really excited to share this with you. Six things about heaven in Revelation 21. Revelation chapter 21. So let's turn our Bibles there. I have about six things about heaven. Amen. Let's read Revelation 21 verse 1. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word. We pray that you open our hearts. I pray that each heart will be blessed to receive this and it will grow and bear fruit. Fruit of everlasting life. Repentance leading to everlasting life. And Lord, excite us about our new home, our future home in heaven, because that's our reward. Amen. That's our only hope. This world will pass away, but our hope is in heaven. Amen. In Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you. I also pray that there will be healing at the end of the ser sermon, that people will be healed strengthened, edified, encouraged. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So I'm really excited to share with you uh, six things about heaven. Revelation chapter 21. Let's read verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. So the first thing about heaven, it will be entirely brand new. Amen. Look at what it says. There's a new heaven. John saw a new heaven and a new earth. And the first earth and the first heaven was gone. There will be a brand new heaven one day. Even the heaven today that exists, uh, will be replaced. Right? Uh, so that means the heaven where God is right now will be replaced. That's, that's how I understand it. So we're, we should be really excited about this. Because by this time, you know, the church will be in heaven. So it seems like God will move into a new place to dwell with his bride. And we are his bride. So when you, have, when you move to a new place, it's always exciting, isn't it? When you move to a new house, it's always exciting, right? So I really believe God will, is preparing a new place for, for us. It's called the new heavens and the new earth. The first heaven and the first earth will be gone. Everything you see down here, this neighborhood will be gone. It will just disappear. Amen. So nothing will be left here. <laughs> Everything will be brand new. So the first point is, yeah, uh, 
there will be a permanent brand new heaven and earth one day. Amen. A new heavens and a new earth one day. And it will be permanent. Permanently brand new. Amen. So that's why I made a post earlier that, that God doesn't recycle old plants. Right? He doesn't recycle old plants. He closes the doors. Right? God doesn't have a, an inventory of old doors. He just closes those doors. And when he closes it, it's a brand new beginning. There's, it's irreversible. You cannot go back. Amen? I really believe that God doesn't recycle old plants. Um, I remember uh, trying to bring my son back to Surrey Christian School. I know some people here graduated there, right? For grade 8, he was going to go back to Christian school again. And we didn't know that night we got an email from the principal that he was not allowed to go back. They changed their minds. And so I drove my, my, my son there first day. He was not welcome, you know. Yeah. The door was closed. And I remember my son phoning me, Dad, pick me up. <laughs> and, and I didn't know there was an email that night from the principal. You know, every time I look at that, it's just a closed door. Right? And then that was the end of Surrey Christian School for him. And you know what? God opened because he was playing football. Regent, sorry, uh, Holy. Holy Cross That's Catholic right. School, but they had a great football team, great football coach. And he ended up playing two years. And you know what? That was the beginning of a new journey. After high school, he ended up in Toronto and then to Scotland and finished uh commercial bachelor of arts majoring commercial music in two years two and a half years because it was uh accelerated program so yeah i realized yeah i felt heartbroken that day he phoned me i had to pick him up and he was full of rage and anger for the next two years uh he had to stay in public school for the next two years i believe but in grade 11 and 12 he moved to Holy Cross. That, that started the new chapter of his life. It's closed. And now I'm very proud of his accomplishments. So sometimes it's just like that. See, I was trying to recycle an old door, an old plan. I was forcing my, my way for him to go back, you know. But, yeah, but closed door. So same with heaven, you know. Uh, the old earth, the first earth and the first heaven will disappear. You won't even find it. You won't even remember it one day because there'll be a brand new heavens and a brand new earth. You know why? Why God will do something brand new? Because we're special. Amen? We're special. Remember what Jesus said? If I go away, I will prepare a mansion for you. So where I am, there you may be also. I believe that's the new heavens and the new earth. We'll have mansions in heaven because we're special, you know. My son was special. He had a wonderful plan for his life. Right? So sometimes it's just like that. God will lead you to a new beginning, a new chapter. Okay? So the second principle about heaven is that it will be a permanent reunion. You know, let's, let's read this. Behold, verse 3, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. Did you hear that? The tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them. He will be with them. They shall be his people, and God himself will be their God. So it's a permanent reunion. Amen? We will never be separate. It will be a physical reunion. You know, if you have a husband in the Philippines, it's not a physical reunion. Right? But, but when, you, when your husband arrives in Canada and you live together, that's a different story. Amen? So I really believe one day we will be with the Lord forever. And ever and ever, amen. 
We will never be separated from God one day. We, we shall be his people and he shall be our God. Amen? That's a permanent reunion. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. Are you excited to leave everything behind? Right? Sometimes I think about it. Why buy a new house? Kung iiwanan mo din lang, you know? You buy a new car, you buy a new house, then you're going to leave it? <laughs> That's not a person, you know, it's a temporary excitement, you know, but when you think about heaven, hey, it will be forever and ever, right? Amen. So we should be more excited about heaven than material things, amen? Your house is still new. Can you imagine what a 35-year-old house is? Go to my house. You'll see molds. Amen? That's Yeah. You, then you realize your excitement is good only for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Amen? Praise God. So the next thing about heaven, so number two, it's a permanent reunion. Number three, heaven will be pain and suffering free. Permanently free of pain and suffering. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's read the verse four. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. And there shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. See? Death, physical death, pain, suffering, sorrow, crying. It's just temporary. One day it will be Gone forever. It will pass away. You know, I'm traumatized by physical death. Tell you honestly, I've seen, I've seen my parents die in my arms. I've seen uh, Brother Ed dead. Well, I, I didn't, by the time I got there, he passed away already. So I just saw his body, his lifeless body. And his wife keeps caressing him for another hour or so. I know a female, uh, a lady senior uh, who hugged her husband for like seven hours. Eight hours. Eight hours until the hospital had to take away the body. Right? So it can be traumatizing, you know. You know, it, you know, my mom passed away. It took pr probably a week. Every day we were in, in the hospital. And she just wouldn't go. <laughs> she was fighting it. Amen. And after she stopped breathing, uh, I thought she was dead until she, what do you call this? Uh, she jerked her body, you know. She, <laughs> she twitched, you know, like a forceful twitch. That was it. That was the final. Twitch. Right? That was the final act. After that was gone. But I really saw her turn her head like this. And I thought it was over until she twitched. And you know, death can be trauma traumatic, you know. But I, I thank God in heaven, there will be no more death. I don't have to bury people. <laughs> right? No more hospital visitations. Amen? No more pain and suffering. You know, we, we live in a... You know, if you're Ukrainian and you lost your house, it became rubbles. Three years, you lost your equity. The bank doesn't even exist, you know? No. <laughs> so sometimes think about it. You have half a million from equity in a bank and there's World War III. You can't even access it, right? No internet, no computer, no money. Everyone is bankrupt. The government is bankrupt. So, yeah, you can't put your trust on material wealth. Amen? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Amen. So, if you're in Ukrainian or the whole world is suffering in the Philippines, you saw that flooding, you know, people are suffering. Well, they seem to be enjoying the flood anyway, you know. <laughs> they seem to be drinking from the flood too, right? Uh, and then you hear about deaths, you know. <laughs> from rat B or whatever. Yeah, I mean, uh, people suffer emotionally, you know, mentally. Uh, families being, you know, 
suffering divorce, you know, uh, families being torn apart by Satan, you know, uh, people developing all kinds of anxiety, you know. Uh, I, I heard about many kids who had who were diagnosed with AD, what do you call it? AD ADHD. ADHD. And I heard uh, my two boys got got diagnosed as an adult, and maybe I have it too, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I don't even know what that means, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in heaven there won't be such thing like as ADHD, right? No. no. <laughs> yeah, but that's why my my boys were so adventurous, you know. You know, Joach just quit his job. Mm -hmm. It's a high paying job, but he had to quit it because he's not happy, you know. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Yeah. <laughs> he said he didn't enjoy his last job, you know, supervising people. Now he just want to write songs. He had a bunch of songs he can sell, you know. But anyway, yeah, in heaven, um, there'll be no, we, we'll all be perfect mentally, physically in heaven. No more sciatica. No more. Hey Amen. Actually, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thanking to God. I can still stand the full hour, but I can feel a little bit of pain here. You know? Um. Yeah, I'm supposed to get an x-ray the past two weeks, so it's, I'm late now. Just to see if your spine is still okay, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Obviously, I look okay, but, you know, I tried to run. I can't <laughs> run anymore. Wow. Yeah. Like, like, really put on your running shoes and just run. It's The pain activates as soon as you first three steps. You just feel you're not the same person right so yeah it's just some of you have worse condition well, depends because you're older than me <laughs> right yeah. but I'm gonna I'm gonna be there too <laughs> you know I, I'm gonna I want to size challenge the seniors if they can drive to Calgary I'll give them a thousand dollars because I don't believe you can't drive anymore. We it's can. just here. And again, you can. <laughs> it's just here. If it's two thousand, even drive. Yeah. If you visit us one day, I'll give you two thousand. <laughs> if you can make it. <laughs> but I don't, don't really believe that, you know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe one day I. Me too. Maybe if. I don't know, maybe when I'm 80, because our body changes, right? Brain. Our brain changes too. <laughs> but so far, I would rather quit my body than this. <laughs> this is the most important. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. If this quits, you can't accomplish anything. Right? Take care of it. So make sure your mind is always the last <laughs> weapon to quit. Amen? Praise God. But in heaven, we will have perfect bodies. So it's going to be a, an exciting life in heaven. No more maintenance pills. Can you say amen? Yeah. No. <laughs> no more maintenance pills. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. So it will be the same body as Jesus Christ. Glorified body. I really believe that. Yes. Amen. That, but the thing is, no more persecution, no more relationship breakdowns, no more betrayals, no more uh, narcissistic abuse within the family, no more abusive parents, right? Because everything will be brand new. Even children will no longer be abusive of their parents. Everything will be brand new. So praise God. No more crying. No more sorrow. Can you imagine that? Aren't you going to miss all your problems? <laughs> because in heaven you want to cry, but you can't cry. Full of joy. You know? Full of joy. You want to heaven, but you not do it. You want to be negative. You want to tear down your neighbor in heaven. Right? But you can't just do it. I think that would be exciting, isn't it? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 
You want to get jealous of your neighbor? You can't. You want to envy their whatever they have, and you can't because you're not the same person in heaven. Amen? Problem-free life in heaven. So what else? No more financial worries. Amen? No interest rates in heaven. No more streaming. No more No, No interest rates in heaven. No boredom in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. So that will be exciting, is it? That's number three. Well, number four, uh, of course, heaven will be high end, made of precious materials. Amen. Praise God. Let's let's read verse 19. And the foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth uh, chrysophrase, the eleventh jacinth, the twelfth amethyst, and the 12 gates were made of pearls. Each individual gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God and the Lamb are its temple. I mean, so in a, it's, it's made of high-end materials. Streets of gold. Pearly gates, amen, and 12 kinds of stones, amen. I don't even know what those stones are, how they look like. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be much better than your countertop, <laughs> right? <laughs> amen. So I don't think we need to renovate heaven. There's no upgrade needs in heaven. Mm-hmm. It's made of stuff that will not perish. Imperishable materials. Amen. Made of gold. Wow, streets of gold. Streets of gold. So if you don't have gold today, don't even think of (laughs) getting one. Or don't, don't feel bad that you don't have a lot of gold. Amen. Because in heaven, we will walk on streets of gold. Amen. Yeah, I, I don't have a lot of gold, just my wedding ring. Amen. Yeah. I don't I, I'm not like uh Mayweather, you know, with a lot of gold. You know that boxer Casimiro? Yeah. He loves gold, right? <laughs> Those golds are like expensive, ten thousand dollars, you know. Yeah, ten thousand like half a million. 500,000 pesos. Those, those big chains. Yeah, well, I'm not interested in gold. I'm not into jewelry. Amen? Well, you don't need to because in heaven you will have a lot of gold. Amen? And I guess you will have all day just touching gold in heaven, you know, just like scrubbing your feet, you know, just like... Wow, it's rolling your back, right? Like your dog, you know? <laughs> Every time he's, in the, he's brought in, he rubs his back at the carpet. You know? <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. So heaven will be exciting. Amen. Yeah, if you love precious stones, it will all be in heaven. Amen. So that's, what's that, number four? Um, Okay, what's the next one? Well, it says in heaven, well, in heaven, it's it's already mentioned here, there will be no building, verse 22. I saw no temple in heaven, verse 22. Because God and the Lamb, Jesus Christ, are the temple. You know, we always make this mistake of thinking it's the building, that's the church. 
We don't, we're in the house right now, amen? <laughs> Jesus is our building. The, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? He lives in us. The Spirit of God lives in us. Actually, if you think critically, okay, let's talk about critical thinking. Having a building has more disadvantages because you have to pay, it's a $5 million building, $3 million building. How much mortgage is that? You have to pressure all your members to give $1,000 a month to pay, <laughs> to pay it. Right? Hmm. That's tough, right? And then the maintenance, right? The taxes, oh no, there's no property tax. Please. But the maintenance, right? And yet, you, you get stuck. All your resources go to the building. No mission. It, it, you know, when it comes to the missions, the work of the missions, you run out of funds right away. Amen? Because of high maintenance, right? Because of the building maintenance. So I, I really believe we are freer, you know, in the book of Acts, the church, the gospel spread like wildfire. Wildfire. Because there were no buildings. Uh, the believers were witnesses for Jesus Christ. You witness to your neighbor, and then the following Sunday, there's there's a house meeting there, a house church meeting there. Mm -hmm. Then the following Sunday, there's a house church meeting in another house. That's how they spread. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it will have advantages and disadvantages. But I believe, because this is my second year now, you know, doing house church, uh, I think I'm freer. If you invite us to your house, we will go to your house. Mm -hmm. And you know, some people, they're stuck. They, they can't go to church because they're working. Uh, you know, or sometimes they're families, like seniors who can't travel anymore. Right? The seniors need church too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? And then you will deprive them of church because... Their kids don't want to drive them to church and they can't take the bus. Mm -hmm. Now, the house church is a, not, it's a good option. Right? Heart. We'll bring the church right into your house. Yes. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And then everybody will hear about Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus is our building. Just like in heaven. See, G God and Jesus will be our building. Amen? Praise God. So I think that's, that's a lot of advantages. And sometimes in your household, there are people who are, you know, they're double-minded, you know. They want the gospel, but they don't like the rain. <laughs> well, we'll go to your house. Amen. <laughs> and I think it's a good family reunion too, right? Yeah, when, when families can... Get together. You know, it's much easier to spread the gospel that way. Right? And you don't have a lot of distractions in the building, right? Because everybody's listening, you know. You don't have to worry about the kitchen, you know. Nobody's cutting tomatoes <laughs> during the sermon. The Nobody's fixing the, the, the dishwasher, you know. Yeah. We're all listening to the gospel. Yeah. Isn't it? Amen. Yes. You know, in heaven, there's nothing to fix. There's no kitchen in heaven. No, no building. We're all just going to look at, you know. You know, another feature of heaven is we shall see God face to face. It's right here. Amen. You know, verse 23, the Bible says, you know, and the city had no need. Heaven will have no need of sun or the moon to shine in it. For God will illuminate it. The lamb is its light. You know, in heaven, God will be our light. Amen. In, look at chapter 22, verse 5. There shall be no night in heaven. They need no lamps in heaven. No sun. For the Lord gives them light. Amen. God will be our light. No hiding from fields in heaven. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
You still want a big house? <laughs> Pay 500 a month? 500 a yeah. month? 500. 500. 5,000 a month. No, no, 500 a month. The, the hydro. Oh, hydro. Hydro. The hydro. On the coldest, December and January, uh, my windows are bad, right? Uh, there was a time I was paying four to 500 one month, December and January, in the coldest months. So I have to wait until it's late spring, summer, it goes down to about 120. Right, 130. That's combined hydro and gas. But in the coldest months, wow, about four or five hundred a month. Not plus, much. Plus the mortgage. Yeah. <laughs> so in heaven, you don't need that. <laughs> yeah. Amen. That's why in our house sometimes it's dark because we really remove all the bulbs. You know? <laughs> so we can pay the heat. So if this is my house, there'll be just one spotlight. <laughs> Reduce the bill. <laughs> yeah, reduce the bill, right? In heaven, no electric bills. God will be our light. Our hydro company is God. He's going to give us free light. It must be bright in heaven, isn't it? No darkness, no night, no darkness. You can't even hide your whatever you want to hide, right? <laughs> the bright side. There's no place to hide. You know, unlike in your house, you, you can hide your $500 here from your wife, you know? Yeah. But in heaven, you can't hide it anywhere because it will be bright in heaven. Amen? Praise God. Yeah, you don't need money in heaven, too. <laughs> so you have to adjust to a brand new life. And if you miss your work, you want to work? You can't do that in heaven. No. You have to forget your employer for good. Amen. You have to forget about your work. Amen? You don't have to wake up early in heaven. Amen. Praise God. That will be good, isn't it? So the next one, I think number six, number five or six, we shall see God face to face. Amen. It's right here in chapter 22, verse 4. And they shall see his face. And his name shall be on their foreheads. Wow, that's something new to me. Uh, God's name will be on my forehead. You know, now I understand... Why those who receive the mark of the beast, they cannot be in heaven. Yeah. Six, six, six. Because they would put it on their head, right? Or on their uh, hand, right? On their head. or That means if you receive the mark, that's it. You cannot receive the, the name of God at the same time. You, you pick one. What do you want? The mark of the Antichrist or the name of God? But those who will be in heaven... Of course, they will be in heaven because they refuse the Antichrist. So in heaven, it's God's name that's on their forehead. And they shall see God face to face. Verse 4. Can you imagine see, looking at God face to face? God will not be offended by it. You can stare at God all day. And God will be offended. God's not going to complain. I'm thinking in Wijan. Because in the Philippines, pag natignan mo ng konti, galit na, di ba? Yung mga siga-siga. Yeah. <laughs> and here we stare too long with a beautiful woman. That's improper, in impolite. Right? Unless you have a relationship, then you can look all day. <laughs> Right? Amen. I used to look at my wife, you know, we were sitting in a in a couch. And the, the sad thing is no matter how I tried to remind her, she forgot about it. Can you imagine that? She forgot. She can't even remember it. That was 1988 or 89. And Gia was a very young woman back then. Uh, she had her hair ponytailed. 
<laughs> and all her face was exposed. I remember all afternoon we were sitting in the couch and I was just caressing her forehead and keep saying, you're so pretty. <laughs> You're so pretty. <laughs> like two hours. That's all I was doing. I can't talk anymore. Yeah, hindi na ako wala, you know. Parang ang gagawa sa kanya nun. But she can't remember it. Maybe somebody else. Maybe somebody else. Somebody else. No. It was in my mother's house. 32 to 10, Carolina Street. Vancouver. I have that couch is still alive today. My sister has it. I guess we'll have to do it later. <laughs> you can't remember it? We'll do it again. But this time it's be different. On your mom? Pwede na pa ako mag-cellphone? Nag-pose si Sheryl eh. Right? It's different nowadays, right? Amen. Okay. Yeah, today, if we do it, I think it will be one minute. For one minute. And after that, we'll be scrolling our phone. Back to his own room, right? <laughs> That's life today, isn't it? Amen. <clears throat> so yeah, looking face to face, we shall see the face of God. You know, nobody has seen the face of God except the original disciples, right? The, the people who were alive in Jesus' day saw him. 500 people saw him go back to heaven. So we, we didn't see his face. I don't know, he was a Jew, so I don't know, maybe he's handsome, right? Mm, maybe yeah. he looks like, uh, who's that, the Matrix actor with the long Keanu hair? Keanu Reeves? Yeah. yeah, maybe he looks like Keanu Reeves. <laughs> handsome, a long hair with, you know, <laughs> beard, right? Maybe. Yeah, but in heaven, maybe I can touch his beard, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, remember the disciples, one of them was leaning on his chest, you know. John. John, not Judas. No. Oh, was it John? <laughs> John. Yeah, maybe you can kiss him in heaven, right? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we will see his face. That's good. Amen. So, what's the next one? Maybe number six. Okay, in heaven, there will be no sinner in heaven. God and sin. That's the next one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, read this carefully. Verse 8, Revelation 21, verse 8. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. See, there will be no cowards, unbelieving, abominable murderers, sexually immoral in heaven, idolaters, liars. And then there's another verse again, uh, verse 27, Revelation 21, verse 7. But there shall by no means enter in heaven anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. See? Only those whose names are written in the registry book of life will be in heaven. So that means if your name is not written in that book, you will be outside. Right? Another verse, chapter 22, verse 15. But outside are the dogs, the sorcerers. Sorcerers, yung mga mangkukulam. Yeah? Those who believe in witchcraft. Practice witchcraft. Sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters. And whoever practices and loves a lie. So, can you imagine? The immorals, the sexually perverts, will the LBGT 
people go to heaven? Yes, if they receive Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, if they are washed by the blood, if they repent of their sin, they will go, they will be in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. But if you refuse to repent, yes. then sinners, remember this, the immorals, the perverts, liars, cowards, murderers, idolaters, greedy people cannot be in heaven. You know, it's it saddens me that so many people are deceived. You just if you just look at Facebook, it seems like everyone is in heaven. Yeah. Even Hitler is in heaven, you know. <laughs> Happy birthday, Hitler in heaven. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine if somebody greets Hitler on Hitler's birthday? Happy birthday, Hitler in heaven. And then you see your relatives do that a lot. Right? Happy birthday, yeah. Yeah. Tito, Tita in heaven. Or happy birthday, mom. How do you know they're in heaven? Yeah. Yeah. Right? I'm, I'm not being judgmental here, okay? That's not. But the Bible says that the only way you can be in heaven is if your name is written in the book of life. Yes. That means you have received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You've been washed by the blood. And that all your immoral acts, your sins of the past are forgotten. Mm. You know, I guess I belong to the drunk card in the 80s. The immorals, the sexually immoral in the 80s. Uh, you know, I guess to some degree I practiced lying, uh, idolatry, murder, you know. Uh, but all those sins were forgiven. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I'm guilty of abortion, tell honestly, everybody knows that. So that makes me a murderer yeah. and an immoral person. I made it to Canada because of that. And then I got born again. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So I can't reverse my mind anymore. Mm -hmm. All I can say is all things happen for a reason. Yes. yes. Right? All things happen for a reason. I was a sinner. I was lost. I repented. God forgave me. Thank you, God. You know, I became a free man because of that, but because God turned it for good. God can turn our sins for good. You know, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good. I was blind. I was ignorant. I was an, a sinner back then. Ignorant. Totally ignorant of the gospel. Until God opened my eyes and I knew it was wrong. And I walked away from my gang in the 80s. Uh, from those wild parties. And here I am preaching the gospel 34 years now. So this gospel are for sinners, mm -hmm. especially if God is bringing them to heaven too. God, God wants to save them. Mm -hmm. Our path will cross. Yes. Our paths will cross. Yes. One day I will meet them, or they will hear my sermon. Yes. Right. I know I have a classmate in San Bernardino who is fighting cancer too. He's listening to me. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And back then, we were the same group of immorals, you know, the immortals. <laughs> College life, right? I knew his life, you know. But he's listening to me right now. Actually, he texted me one time and requested for prayer because he's battling cancer, you know. Now the table is turned. It's time to seek God because you're going to die. You don't know what life will bring you, right? And the only reason why we survive is because God is not finished with the gospel. Yes. Amen? Yes. But when we're done, we're excited to go to heaven too, one day. Amen? In his time, not yet. In his time. And I'm glad she didn't leave me because I don't know what my life would have been. I could have remarried in 2011, 2012. Because <laughs> if she died, she would have died in 2009. Yeah. 2010. So... Maybe I, I'm remarried today. Maybe I'm not here anymore. Backslidden. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I would have married an, an unbeliever. I, you don't know what I can do, right? But you know, God sometimes, just like your dog, he knows what's good for your dog and what's bad for your dog. And God will protect your dog. So if God can protect your dog, he can protect me. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. Amen. 
Praise God. So yes, uh, so this is a warning. Those who practice abomination and they did not accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, they will not be in heaven. I know it's tough. Yeah. I don't want to persecute people, but I have relatives who died in darkness. Yeah, my, my grandfather died with three wives. She was with, I think, number three when he died. And my dad had to fight for his body to bring him back to the first wife, you know? <laughs> number one. Yeah, it was a fight. My dad was a young agent at the National Bureau of Investigation. And the mistress, uh, I think, uh, his, uh, her father was chief of police. And my dad, I remember, my dad keeps telling me this story. He said, I'm not going to go back to San Pedro alive mm -hmm. without my dad. And if something happens to me here, my team agents are coming. <laughs> and so he took his body home, my grandfather's. Can you imagine the, the death of a sinner? The wives were fighting. <laughs> it's dead. <laughs> yeah. That's the kind of life. That's the kind of background I came from. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, my dad has his escapades too, and I had my escapades too. I'm just lucky not to have married. That's it. So when she found me, I was legit single. <laughs> <laughs> legit. <laughs> and I thought, what if I was married? Then I had a wife, and they went, she wouldn't even entertain me. <laughs> For sure. Amen. Because her standards were high. <laughs> so it's all, I guess that's all the plan of God, right? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Lord. Yeah, all things work together for good. Amen. Amen. So I accepted Christ and I got forgiven. My name is written in the book of life. Yeah. Amen. Okay, who, who will be the only people in heaven? Well, there's two categories. Verse 7. Revelation 21, verse 7. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. I will be his God and he shall be my son. He who overcomes. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then Revelation 22 verse 14. Blessed are those who do, who obey his commandments. That they may have the right to the tree of life. And they may enter through the gates into the city. They will enter the gates of heaven. They have the right to go to heaven because they keep his commandments. They overcome. So who will be in heaven? One verse says, he who overcomes shall inherit all things. God, he shall be my son. Amen. I will be his God and he shall be my son. He who keeps my commandments shall have the right to the tree of life. That's heaven. You know, who are those who inherit? I'm almost done. Who are those who overcome and obey the commandments? Who are those who overcome sin and obey the commandments? Those are the only people who will be in heaven. Their names are written in the book of life. You know why? Because they are true Christians. True. There are two kinds of Christian, brother. There are those who overcome and keep the commandments. They are the children of God. And there are those who are Christians in name only. You can put a lot of sticker in your car. But if you're not obeying the commandments, you're not a true Christian. You know, because you know what I believe? When, when God regenerates the heart, when you become born again, if, if you're Salvation is real. If you, if you really accepted Christ genuinely and you become born again, you know, born again simply means regenerated. That means God has given you a brand new heart. Amen. You're not the same person. And that brand new life, you know, will be described to be Christ-like. You know, the description of that brand new life is Christ-like. There will be Christ-likeness. There will be obedience. I'm not saying that we will become sinless and perfect. We will still stumble. My 34-year journey is not a perfect journey. We stumble in many ways. 
But one thing I know deep in my heart is I know my my regeneration, my, my salvation is real because I couldn't do some of the things I used to do before. It was really hard. Amen. Sinning will not be easy again when you become born again. But yes, you can stumble in where you can get angry, you can get mad, you can have a short disagreement. But hey, planning to have a mistress will be like sweating bullets, right? It's not going to be easy. Your conscience will kill you. Of course, there will be temptation. There will be people who want to... You know, who, who will put you in a temptation, you know? Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit will be there for you. Yes. Thank You'll you. You'll be able to get away from it. Amen? So it's because the Spirit of God has been deposited in you. And your heart is not the old person. You have a brand new heart. A heart that is created in, in Christ, into the image of God. You have, you are created. The Bible says you have... You have been created into the image of God. You have Christ-likeness in you. Amen. Even though we're not perfect yet, we, we are Christ-like. Amen. We have the righteousness of Christ in us. Amen. So if you're not, you're, if your life is not, has not been transformed and you think you're a Christian, better examine your heart. Yeah. Because a true Christian will find it really hard to lie. A true Christian will find it hard to get drunk every day. It's your conscience will bother you. Yeah? You're not the same. Life will not be the same. I can't really imagine 34 years I have lived to be a preacher of the gospel now. It's by the grace of God. And he knows I could not have done this without him. If God abandons me any single moment, I will be a total failure. I, I could only do this because of the Holy Spirit in me. Yes. And I still pray the same thing. Lord, keep me all the time. Yes. Amen. Yes. I don't want to fall back to my old life. Amen. Praise God. So those are the true Christians who will be in heaven. Born again Christians. Okay. They practice the word, they obey the word, and they overcome sin. What will happen to LBGT Christians? Well, they think it's okay to God. Being a woman is okay to God. That's a different gospel. That's a satanic gospel. Believe me, they will not make it to heaven. Right? Religious Christians in name only... Not born again, no personal relationship with Jesus, no Holy Spirit. They will not make it there. Remember, God has a book. And he knows who the true children are. Amen? Make no mistake. God knows who the true children, who his true children are. Amen? In heaven... There will be no mistake. There will be no single person there who entered by mistake. No. Because in the first place, God has prepared a different place for you called the burning lake of fire. That's hell. Amen. So praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful gospel. Lord, we have persevered through the years. We have struggled to overcome sin and faithfulness. There were times we were lazy to go to church, but we struggled to fight, to overcome, because we know we are true believers. We struggle with sin because we have the Holy Spirit in us. And I thank you that it's worth it that one day, we will be with you forever and ever in a brand new place called heaven. And we shall see you face to face and there will be no more pain and suffering. I thank you for that life. We're excited to be there. I pray that you keep every person here today, preserve every person here today. The, the promise of God is he will keep you, preserve you for salvation until the last day. 
He will preserve you because God has predestined you to go to heaven one day. He will guard you. He will chase you. He will stalk you. He will not abandon you because he will finish the work of salvation. Because God has prepared a place for you called heaven. Amen. So be faithful. Hang on to the faith. Be faithful to God. Hang on to the faith. Those who overcome, those who practice the word and obey until the very end will be saved. So my prayer here is every man here, every father. But, you know, I, I really pray that Jesus will be so real, so alive in your heart right now. That you just know, that you know, that you know, I'm a child of God. I'm not the same person. I, I know it because Jesus is in my heart. Amen. I pray every husband, every father here, every male here, every man here, every, every one of us here, ladies, children, that the presence of Jesus will be so strong that without a doubt, they know that they know that they know they are children of God. They've been saved and born again. The Spirit of God will prove this to you, will testify this to you in the name of of Jesus Christ. We pray for Nanai. Let's pray. I already prayed for her earlier when she was at the bed, in her bed. Is she here right now? No. Let's pray for Nanai Clarita again. On the bed. Okay, I already laid hands on her earlier.